Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of MPH Moto E Performance and Health with Coach Rob Beams. Welcome back. Thanks, brother. So this is an interesting uh, topic we've got today. It's basically, are you doing too much as an amateur, maybe even more than the pros are? Um, so we have a, a problem as, as amateur motocross enthusiasts, some of us, that we, we're like, I need to train more. I go out, I'm not in shape enough. Sure. I want to be able to ride more. I want to be able to do this. But... Um, you know, you and I were talking a little bit. I, you can only do so much. That's right. You know, I, I complain to you that I, I want to be in better riding shape and I want all these things, but I, I'm a full-time fireman. I'm, I'm trying to run a show. We're building stuff for the website. I've got project bikes for Vital. I've got two kids playing soccer. I've yeah. got a wife that I'm trying to stay married to. That all takes, you know, consumes from the pie. That's right. And so there's only so much pie. That's right. Damn it. I hate that there's only so much pie, That's but, right. um, you, you, you feel like people are probably discrediting themselves and, and all of the stresses that their lives have, and they need to be a little more realistic about the output that they can still give. That, I mean, that's, that's it. In a sum, you know, you surmise it the best. If you look at life, we really have four quadrants. You have what's going on personally. You have what's going on professionally, or for some of our younger listeners, maybe what's going on in school. You have af- the financial side of things, and you have the athletic. Well, with my relationship with my clients, I can only influence that one box. I can, ch- I can adjust the duration, the intensity, or the frequency of training. But I also have to respect that every client has those as- other three attributes of life. There's only 24 hours in the day, and as the old saying goes, you can't manage time, you can only manage yourself. And if I, if I can get the listeners to stop and think about what does the average listener do by noon on Monday? You know, you've got the, uh, Michaela and I tease about this all the time, the dreaded Monday morning marathon fest that you got to live with. You know, you've been in and out two or three meetings. You've read some reports. You've, you know, you've, you've driven to work. You've maybe had a, maybe you've gone to the gym on the way in, so you got up early. Think about all of that by noon. And so when, when our listeners watch or they see an article on about what the pros are doing and then they try to incorporate that in, or especially with YouTube, everyone's an expert nowadays. And so you watch something on YouTube and you're like, oh, well, Billy Bob's doing this or doing that. And then you try to incorporate that in. Where in God's green earth are you going to put that in? Yeah. You know, now I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because in some of our other podcasts or, you know, shows that we've done together, we've talked about address your frustrations. You go race. If you're falling apart at the end of a moto, work on your endurance, work on your flexibility if you're struggling in corners. But my question is, where are you going to fit that in? Mm. And yourself included, you know, multiple jobs, having t- two growing daughters, a great relationship, well, that doesn't accidentally become successful. Just like you've heard me say, I don't like accidental success on the racetrack. There's no such thing as accidental success in life. So when we look at the volume of training that our athletes are doing, and for a lot of the listeners, you know, they're they're trying to get in an hour before work or they're trying to squeeze in an hour after work. Well, what are the two things that gets sacrificed to make that happen? Sleep and food. Mm -hmm. What are the only two things that allow the body to sufficiently recover? Sleep and food. You think about it when Amber was pregnant, right? She's eating perfect. She's pregnant. Then she has the baby, and then she's licking the inside of the baby jar. She's sleeping when the baby's sleeping. What are the two things that she lost? The ability to sleep and to eat. Same thing with yourself. We rush into this thing called adulthood. You know, you when and we could talk about this on another show. But like, when do we transition into you're just somebody that enjoys riding a dirt bike, and every time you're on your dirt bike, you're training. You know, when do you jump on your specialized bike and enjoy riding your mountain bike, but now it's training? Yeah. That's a dangerous, slippery slope because we start to lose the fun. Now, again. The problem I have is that I only have fun when I can go out and actually ride it. Sure. If I get arm pumping two laps and I got to pull in, yeah. You're that back pisses frustrated. me off. I'm not having fun. Yep. So I've got to figure out, you know, and for me, it's I have to ride once a week. Yep. If I can ride one time a week, I can stay relaxed enough spot. to stave that off. Yep. And I, I still exercise at the station and when I have time, but. That one ride a week for me is enough to stay having fun. And that's my biggest concern. Well, that's with where this. the structure, for some of the listeners, they'll look at structure as taking the fun out of it. I look at structure allows you to be, and you and I grew up with this in high school, being in the moment. There is nothing worse than you being at the station thinking about riding and then riding thinking about your daughters at soccer, being at soccer yeah. thinking about being at work, being at work, and then you go on date night and you're thinking about something else. Well, date night's a bust. You're, you just run everything, everything, yeah, yeah. right? So that being in the moment is hokey as that may come across initially. If I know I've given myself one hour to do a 45 minute workout, I'm in the workout. I'm going to get everything out of that workout because I know what my frustration was on race day. 
So now when I'm in the gym, I'm addressing that frustration with the exact time I've been given, but I don't feel like a lot of the listeners give themselves credit. Sometimes you just don't have an hour to do cardio. Be fine with 30 minutes. Yeah. I don't care if you get out of your car and walk around your block. You do that every day. Let's say it's 10 minutes. That's 50 minutes on Monday through Friday. It's 50 minutes more than you had on Monday. Yeah. Every little bit counts. Consistency is way more important than anything. Yeah. Amen. And, and, you know, listening to your body, if you feel like you're just dragging ass, listen to that. You know, don't pump yourself full of... What happens when you do it? You get sick or you get injured. Yeah. What are the two things yeah. that stop our progress as an athlete? Sick or injured. That's the only two things. That's the only two things. When and you it, really boil it down. And I thought I was pretty dialed in in terms of uh, time management. And you, you've showed me a whole other level. You know, you, you say your days are, are scheduled down to like pee breaks, take the trash out, date night. You really literally, have it dialed. Literally. And so I, I'm, I'm actually going to get something from that and, and relook at my own program and fine tune it a little bit. But I think for folks who are going, man, how do I fit it all in? Yeah. That's really the only way. It has to be on a schedule written down. Or a Absolutely. lot of it's just not going to happen. Well, and, and I don't want anybody to think I live in a glass house. I mean, there's days that, you know, Michaela and I were traveling. We were up in Vermont doing a performance camp up at Winchester. A flight was delayed. A flight was delayed. We ended up missing a flight. That was a 24-hour day. I don't live in a glass house, but I'm certainly not going to go out and do my intervals the day afterwards, right? Yeah. You know, we went to the gym and we actually swam and we did some foam rolling and um, I'm a massage therapist, so Ms. Michaela got a massage. I mean, you just say, all right, we've got to re- we reconfigure this day because if I give up today to kind of schedule the next four days, well, I pick up four by giving up one. That's a good ROI, return on investment. Mm-hmm. So I'm always looking for that. Yeah. And when I understand the only two things that are going to slow me down are an injury or an illness, the lack of sleep and the lack of food, and I do it for myself, I do it for Michaela, I do it for all my clients, the first thing we do is we block out nine hours of sleep. So if you know that you've got to leave the house at 7 a.m. to get to the fire station by 8, you're not saying you're going to get up at 7. You've got to be up by 6. Why? Because you have to have enough time to get up, eat, go to the restroom, get dressed so you're on time. Yeah. Because when we start rushing, what do we give up? Sleep and food. Mm-hmm. So every time we start that domino effect, we're screwed. So I always look at, you know what time you've got to start tomorrow. You've got to be up by 6. Well, that means you've got to be in bed by 9, 30, 10 o'clock to get yeah. eight hours of sleep. Well, now we're, now we're reverse engineering your week because we're sitting here, whatever day it is, you're like, okay, well, if I don't get to bed by 10 tonight, but I know I've got to get up by 6, it's just simple math. I won't get eight hours of sleep. But that's the only place that your body releases growth hormones and the, what we call recovery hormones, whether it's human growth hormone, testosterone, the natural things that allows us to recover only happens with food Mm. only happens through sleep so if you look at how you cut up the day when someone's rushing what do they give up i'm gonna give up an hour of sleep so i can work out wrong combo yeah and that's what our listeners are are running into and i feel like we're we're uh, maybe it's just an american thing or or specifically american but oh you got to get up you know you'll see these uh, millionaires giving these speeches about how i only sleep three hours a day and i i'm up doing more by 6 a.m. than, you know, and yeah. it's like, well, maybe you're making a lot of money doing that, but your your physical health is going in the crap. Exactly. I mean, you could sit there and, and be on whatever pedestal you want. I'm not trying to be mean, but if, if somebody's realistically holding that schedule, they're probably jacked up, mm. you know, whether they're on Adderall or, you know, uppers and downers and all. I mean, we just, I mean, there's enough history there that when it, when the shit finally hits the road that you, you realize they've ruined themselves to, to do that Yeah, and to put put it on a pedestal like it's a badge of honor you know and we've done that as americans i think absolutely uh, I, I can't really speak for the other countries but yeah. i know at least here it, it is it's a badge of honor to say oh, i'm i'm working three jobs and i'm only i'm only getting four hours of sleep at night i'm going so hard now i don't want to be disrespectful we know there's listeners that are going through difficult times and sometimes you have to work three jobs that's why i'm yeah. saying we don't live in a glass house i don't want to insinuate that but when you do have that option do your level best to protect your sleep like mm-hmm. a baby and I always run it through the litmus test of a child. You know, when you have a little one, irregardless of age, when they're tired and hungry, how much fun are they to be around? Yeah. How reasonable are they? But yet we're adults and we say, suck it up, buttercup, let's yeah. go. And that's the part that becomes really dangerous at the end of it. Because what I want our listeners to be thinking about is sleep is not you being lazy. Sleep is you giving your body what it needs. Eating correctly is not about just, you know, I don't eat this or I don't eat that. Is it an investment or a sacrifice? 
because mm -hmm. you've got to invest in yourself again an overused term right now but you know the idea is invest in yourself with good food you're going to feel better you're going to perform better you're going to drop weight drop body fat vo2 max goes up it's, an, it's just a mathematical formula so it's a win 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 yeah but at the end of the day what good is all that money if you don't have your health and yeah. i know again that sounds a little cliche-ish but the but older our, you get, though, the more true that, that well, starts to Well, but what are our listeners ring. frustrated about? Well, because I'm not able t to ride without arm pump, okay? Well, why is that? If we keep reverse engineering it, well, you're 30 pounds overweight. Why are you 30 pounds overweight? This might surprise people. It's not because you're eating too much. It's because you're not eating enough and you're not sleeping. We can do a whole show on the hormones associated with sleep, but when you sleep, your body releases human growth hormone, which is the hormone that naturally makes you lean. It only gets released when we're asleep, yeah. figuratively speaking. But So if you're not sleeping, you wonder why you're getting heavy. So what do you do? You eat less calories. What does that do? It dries up your body fat. Why? High cortisol. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a domino effect that most of our listeners don't realize. So they try harder and harder, and they work out harder and longer because they got beat on Sunday, yeah. which we can relate to. Yeah. But that's not the solution. So that's why I always say our listeners are doing a lot more, and they've got to give themselves credit to say, hey, you know what? I'm tired. Yeah. Work yeah. smarter, not harder yeah. applies here. And, it really does. And uh, there's a lot of information on your website yep. to help them do that. Be smarter yep. about what you're doing. Uh, yes, you have to uh, be creative and, and manage your time well, but there's also just some good things to do and not to do. And Coach Rob can help you get through those. Get over to CompleteRacingSolutions.com for all those. Uh, there is a ton of free resources. You can also sign up for membership and have access to even more detailed stuff. Uh, thank you for coming Appreciate on. It, bud. Stay tuned for more MPH videos coming soon.